oh, to us it was incredible. It was just, you know, Erie was a magical playground. And I think uh, your perspective of Erie as a child depended on what age you were because when you were, you know, five, six, seven, it was just huge. And you just ran free and wild you, out of the house who's out playing, who can come out and play in and out of each other's houses and, and all that. And as you got a little older, um, you know, 10, 11, 12, incredible games at night. We'd all come out at night, you know, 7 o'clock at night after dinner to play soccer at the tennis court or volleyball or kick the can or, you know, it was just great camaraderie between the kids and, and everyone was out and crawling. And then as you reached your upper teenage years where, you know, you were too cool to play all those little games and stuff, there was just moments of just incredible boredom <laughs> sitting on the top of the steps looking down to the tennis courts where all your friends at IES and Manila were all visiting each other over the weekends and the group of you were stuck here in the compound without much to do and you know such incredible boredom you'd be convinced Tinky Navasir and I are still convinced we saw a UFO in the sky one night and you know we'd sit there praying that somebody's parents would get a shipment from Denmark so we could have some real potato chips and you know just but those times too built some of the greatest bonds and the greatest memories we were all already just so close and so tight all the kids like a big group big family big group of siblings and and everything my dad wasn't the talker at home but uh, it was usually my mom talking about animals of some sort and if the subject wasn't about animals she'd find a way to direct it to animals but no my dad didn't talk a lot about it and um, we knew his title sounded important agricultural economist but invariably the next question was well what's he doing we, I have absolutely no idea <laughs> you know we just had no idea and to the point where there were friends of mine in Manila that were seriously concerned because, um, you know, we lived out in this remote area. They weren't even sure we had electricity out there, you know. And, um, you know, they'd ask about my dad and, you know, he's gone for many months out of the year and, you know, we can't really pinpoint exactly where he is at any given time, but, you know, we get a postcard once in a while, you know. And um, some friends expressed a real concern that they thought he was really, you know, part of the CIA and we were in some sort of witness protection program or something, you know. <laughs> they just, we had no idea what he did. We really didn't. 